Hello and welcome to episode number 20 of Tradecraft Security Weekly. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and I've also got... Mike Filch. ...with us today. Um, and we're going to talk about injecting uh, calendar events into Google Calendars. Um, it's a bit of research that Mike and myself have uh, have worked on very recently. Um, we did a talk on it at Wow Was Hack Invest. And uh, in that talk, we talked about a lot of things. And we wanted to kind of focus on a little bit more attention on the exact vulnerability that we actually disclosed to Google. And that, that's this Google event injection thing. Um, and so we're, we're going to do a quick uh, run through of like the history of, of what this what this uh, what this uh, vulnerability is, how to exploit it, and then we're going to do a quick demo with Mail Sniper. So uh, brief history: Mike uh, was on a red team recently, where um, he he had a very unique customer that was using a Google environment, and and he was looking for interesting ways to go about phishing them and attacking them. And you know, we were we were just talking about it, and I remembered like that I that I, I had a, a calendar invite just show up mysteriously. Uh, or a calendar event show up mysteriously one day. And so I started researching in it and I traced it back to where, uh, you know, I'd been sent an email um, and it included metadata that, that actually added that event to my calendar automatically. And this is something that Google does. It's, it's, they, it's, a, it's a feature, right? Like they, they add events to calendars for things like, like plane flights, uh, restaurant uh, uh, um, events. Uh, what, what, what? Reservations. Reservations, that's <laughs> <laughs> car rentals car rentals um uh yeah Any, anything that you would typically have like a date associated with they'll they'll try to add to add it to your, your calendar to be you know more efficient and be helpful um in your day-to-day -day thing um so looking into that we found um a few different things we found one like yes you can just attach metadata to an email and get that injection to a calendar but more importantly what was interesting is that an email isn't actually necessary at all uh, so all you have to really do is open up Google Calendar and create a new event and then uh, add your, the, the target of who you would like to be on that event and then click don't send invitation. So whenever you click save, it'll ask you, do you want to send an invitation? And if you click do not send, it will not actually send that user an email, but if they're a Google user, it will automatically add it to their calendar. Yeah. So um, And the cool thing with that, though, is um, real quick, is is you don't have to have ever communicated with that person before either. So it could be somebody from a totally different Gmail account or if, um, if it's a G Suite user for another company, um, you don't have to have any history of conversation with them and it'll still work. Exactly. So that it presents a brand new, unique uh, uh, situation for phishing because nobody, nobody's been trained to watch their calendar invites for phishing. Uh, types of links and, and material. Um, everyone's everyone's been trained to just oh email. Let me just be super safe with email and, and you know oh if I get called by somebody let me you know make sure they're not going to try to get me to log into a page somewhere. But hey if a calendar event pops up, <clears throat> you know that's that's something that is kind of new territory. Um, so we we thought about talking about um, the the social engineering aspects of this and how how you could potentially go about uh, you know exploiting somebody who isn't used to seeing calendar events pop up. Um, so one of the things that that uh, we did actually was include a, a conference call site um, in in the uh, in the body of the uh, event, along with a message saying, "Hey, prior to this conference call, review this agenda that's attached to it." Yeah, um, it was super successful. Super, super successful. Yeah, it was it was so successful that we actually had to pull the event. Um, off the calendar because the credentials were coming in too quick, we weren't able to um, actually log into the account and um, and clear out the security alerts before the user seen them. Yeah. So and and the way that he was doing that is he had basically uh, the the link in the event to a fake Google authentication page, so that whenever they click the link, they think they're going to an agenda for this meeting, but in reality they were being redirected to a fake login page where they then had to log in with their creds. Like if they weren't careful enough and weren't watching the URL bar, it looks just like an exact Google page, which we'll do another Tradecraft episode on uh, Mike's tool, Cred Sniper, which is amazing at doing this automatically. Yeah, let me add real quick. We also added a GoTo, me the GoTo meeting link, right? Yeah. And, um, and so it's a really good ruse because people actually will call in and start trying to figure out what the meeting's all about. So you could kind of record the meeting and get some really cool sound bites. So we record the meeting, listen to some, some random intel. <laughs> Start injecting like chat notifications, <laughs> like "Hey, what about this uh, this customer over here?" <laughs> so, okay. So, um, when it comes to these these events and and them being injected into to a calendar, what what are some of like the risks, and what, what why does it matter? Okay, so cool. So with these events, whenever you add them, um, there's a few different ways you could do it. Where 
um, the attendees that are on the event can't see the other attendees. And this is really important because you can imagine um, a business getting compromised by these these um, phishing links and then going back to try to determine you know who else was affected by it. Um, but they can't see all of the attendees in the event, so there's no transparency into who all it was sent to. Um, the other thing that you could do too is, um, so calendar events can be updated by the attendees and you can make it where they only they can only update their own. Um, so there's some really interesting um, things that Google is trying to do in order to mitigate this. Um, so originally we disclosed this, there were no ways to turn it off. And so because there was no ways to turn it off, it was a huge deal for us at our organization, but also for, um, for just you know, the, the masses. Um, and so after disclosing it to Google, uh, about a week later, they came out with these new calendar features and some some enhanced security features that they did. And they gave you a little toggle box where you can make it so that calendar events that were sent to you or that you were added as an attendee won't show up on your calendar unless you've responded um, to the event. And so that kind of made it so that they weren't able to show up automatically anymore, um, which kind of brings into um, you know where we, we started digging a little bit more because they didn't really update me when we disclosed the vulnerability. Um, as having introduced these new features, we kind of stumbled across it in preparation for our talk. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, so seeing that from that perspective, we needed to kind of find a way to get around that, which is kind of where the API came in. Yeah, so keep in mind, everything that we've talked about so far, the, the injecting of calendar bytes, all that has been done from just a basic Gmail account. Like you can literally go sign up for a Gmail account today and, and inject calendar events in other people's uh, calendars. It's super easy. You don't have to do anything else except create an event on the calendar with the Google GUI and click don't send. Uh, but the fact that they now have this extra security setting, um, we started digging into the Google API a little bit more because it, it's it's much more capable and there's so many more settings that you can set with the Google API, including the ability to, to basically state that the user that you're targeting has already accepted the invite. And that, that specific thing bypasses that security setting because it, it looks to Google that they've accepted the invite. Um, so this is one of the things that we're gonna demo here today. So um, with MailSniper, we, we've added in a few new modules to, to uh, basically doing these event injections. Um, there's, a, there's a couple actually. So we've, we've implemented uh, one to specifically just inject events as a basic user and also one with the API. So let's go ahead and start a PowerShell. And I'm going to import the module MailSniper. And uh, one thing that you can always do with uh, with any of the, the PowerShell scripts that, that I write is you can always get help if you if you need the syntax. So if you use git dash help and then uh, give it a module name. So for example, we're going to be using the g or um, the inject invoke dash inject g event API module. So if you do that, you'll get the basic help. But if you add examples to the end of it, I always include a few examples um, so that it's easy for you to go grab the syntax. So let's go ahead and uh, and run this uh, injection. So what we're going to do, oh, yep, let me grab all of it. So what we're going to do here is, and I'll, I'll walk through all these settings. Um, let me pull up the calendar for our target real quick. Oh. So this is our target. Uh, this is this is uh, White Earp. Um, he currently doesn't have anything on his calendar for Thursday, uh, November 2nd. I want to disable the settings too, that'd probably be... Oh, that's a good point, yes. Let's go ahead and disable the settings that would prevent uh, us from automatically adding. So um, there's two settings. There's there's this first one that's called events from Gmail, add automatically. So this basically means like if you receive an event uh, email, like like we talked about with the, the airline flights, uh, dinner reservations, that kind of thing, it will automatically add that. So you can go ahead and disable that. Um, and then additionally down here, we've got automatically add invitations to my calendar. So this is the one that they added recently. Um, and this one, so like uh, if I click no, only show invitations to which I responded. This should uh, prevent uh, the typical event from being added to my calendar, provided that I haven't responded to it. So let's go ahead and save those settings. And now um, as this user, uh, I've got nothing on my calendar for, the, for November 2nd. So let's go look at uh, what we're gonna inject here. So 
First, uh, we're gonna have um, the email address of the, the attacker. So this is, a, this is something that we've gone and signed up for. In this case, uh, I'm using this, this, this account, but um, what you could do is you can go sign up for somebody who's like a, like a doppelganger of an important person at the organization. So let's say that um, you've got like, a, I don't know, like somebody who should be sending emails or should be adding calendar invites. Uh, like let's say, I don't know, one of the chiefs of the organization. Uh, who, would, who would typically call like an all hands meeting kind of thing. Um, go sign up for a Gmail account under that name and now you have something that is at least familiar to the user. When they do open up the calendar by they see the guy's name, might not trigger as many alarms. Um, and then what you're gonna need next is the access token. So the access token is basically the, uh, the, the token that allows you to talk to the Google API. You can go grab one of these. There's, I have the steps in a blog post we're gonna include a link to at the very end. And then you're gonna need the start date and time. Uh, and also the end date and time. So in this case, we're going we're gonna to set it for uh, November 2nd at 1 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we're going to give it an event title of All Hands Meeting with an event description that says, please review the meeting agenda. We're going to include a link to this phishing site, which obviously you wouldn't include. You wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't say phish site. You'd say, um, you know, like uh, superawesomeagendas.com or something <laughs> like that. Um, and then the event location, we're going to give it a go-to meeting link. So now if we run this, it should start injecting this event into the target's calendar. So now let's go check our calendar. Oh, there it is. So now we have all hands meeting on the target's calendar and the phishing site is there. Now now imagine, you know, setting this, you know, for, for a date and, uh, and time that creates a sense of urgency to this user. So, you know, let's say they come into the office at 8.30 a.m. and they now have a 8.40 a.m. meeting they're going to get an alert the second they walk into the office right. at 8.30. You know, if they if they have their Google account attached to their phone, this alert's going to pop up. They're going to see it. They're going to be like, oh my oh my God, like it creates a sense of urgency. This is this is one of the key uh, fundamental things with phishing is creating a sense, sense of urgency because it makes people panic and it makes people do things that they normally wouldn't do when they have a, a longer amount of time to, to, to look at things. So um, this is one of those things that like we really think is a big deal because it does create a sense of urgency. So that is it for the demo, and that's also it for this episode. Mike, do you have anything you want to add? No. Uh, one thing that I would say is, uh, if you are using this technique and you're adding it um, to your target's calendar, um, once you fish them, you could actually remove the event from the calendar without notifying them as well. So you can kind of just disappear, uh, which it, is absolutely. really really useful. Yeah. So I mean, imagine that. So it, now that now that the user's been fished, we know that on the attacker side because we got the creds. Now let's just delete that that event from their calendar completely. Then you know they're like, oh, did something actually happen? Wait, wait, the the event's gone. Like, <laughs> right? <laughs> there's no trace. Um, that's that's kind of kind of a bad day. Um, so we're we're hoping this gets fixed soon. Um, and uh, you know, like if you want to read more about this specific thing, we have a blog post on the Black Hills blog. Uh, I've got a link out there, and also uh, hopefully in the next week or so, we'll have the second post uh, for for uh, this two factor framework, a two-factor attack framework that Mike put together, Cred Sniper, and we're going to be doing another Tradecraft episode on that too. So thank you so much for watching. Um, you can follow us both on Twitter. I'm at Daftac. You stay ready. Mike, thanks so much for being here, man. Thanks. Yep. Take it easy.